know who you are. <laughs> I knew this was when I'd see you again, and I wondered whether or not you'd attend class today. But I know why you're here. <laughs> this is video number 297. It's the 17th video in a unit that looks at all three of the diseases of estrogen deficiency as a group. And I'm doing this so that you can get the big picture about the importance of these three diseases. They are, of course, heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's disease. And if you've been watching my videos diligently and in order, you're practically an expert on all three. In the last two videos, we've addressed the risks of taking HRT against the risks of not taking HRT, and we've pitted your fear of getting breast cancer against your fear of getting these three big diseases. In this unit, you've learned that the concept of estrogen replacement is about who should take it, why they should take it, when they should take it, as well as whether they should take it. So today, I want to expound upon that notion. You know, this is something that I do regularly in my consultations with women. Many times, a woman will have misconceptions or inhibitions about HRT only to find that she is a great candidate who has many more benefits than risks. I encourage you to watch this video to enhance your understanding of the situations in which estrogen replacement is an option. The key is to know the facts. You can always do whatever you want. But it's always better to make your decisions with a complete fund of knowledge than to do so with fear and misconceptions. Now, you will not find this particular presentation in my book, regardless of whether you have the first edition or the second edition. But if you schedule a consultation, you will get it in even greater detail and it will all be tailored specifically to you. So what we'll do today is address each question separately. Who, why, when, and whether. And then we'll combine them. So starting with who should take estrogen replacement. Now, this is really simple. But to address the who, we need to touch just a bit on part of the why. There are two categories of reasons to take estrogen replacement prevention of diseases due to estrogen deficiency, and alleviation of symptoms due to estrogen deficiency. This makes sense, right? Remember back in video 234 when I likened menopause to a tree? You learned that the tree trunk is estrogen deficiency. In other words, it's empty. And all the branches of the tree are the consequences of estrogen deficiency. So heart attack Osteoporosis and Alzheimer's are consequences of estrogen deficiency. And all of the following symptoms are consequences of estrogen deficiency. Anxiety, hot flashes, night sweats, palpitations of your heart, insomnia, fatigue, forgetfulness, mood swings, irritability, depression, joint pain and stiffness, dry skin, hair loss, vaginal dryness, urinary tract infections, urinary incontinence, weight gain, and decreased sex drive. Before the WHI study in 2002, the three big diseases were the primary reason for taking estrogen replacement, and the symptoms were the secondary reason for taking estrogen replacement. But after the WHI released its distorted and terrifying results, those two reasons for taking estrogen replacement were flipped. Suddenly, the symptoms became the primary reason, and the diseases became the secondary reason. But that doesn't change the who for purposes of our video today. Any woman who wants to reduce her risk of heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's, and any woman who has a decreased quality of life because all those, of all those symptoms of estrogen deficiency, is someone who should consider taking estrogen replacement. But why should she consider it? Well, estrogen deficiency, 
at the time of postmenopause, it's just like any other hormone deficiency. It has both short-term and long-term consequences. The short-term consequences are all those symptoms that disrupt every aspect of your life. The long-term consequences are the three big diseases that disrupt your life, period. They're deadly. And just as you would replace any other hormone that was deficient, you need to consider the logic of replacing estrogen. So I ask you, if your pancreas stopped working and you were insulin deficient, would you take insulin replacement? If your thyroid gland stopped working and you were thyroid hormone deficient, would you take thyroid hormone replacement? The only reason you experience menopause is because you are out living your ovaries. And while that makes it natural in the sense that all women who live long enough will experience it, it does not make it natural to live with a hormone deficiency that interferes with both your short-term and your long-term quality of life. The other aspect of why a woman should consider taking estrogen replacement pertains to bridging the gap between the time she loses her own estrogen that her body produces and the time these diseases develop. Bridging the gap. When your body has to function without an essential hormone, it starts causing damage to your organs. So, given the fact that you can anticipate estrogen loss at postmenopause, bridging the gap is a good reason to consider estrogen replacement. If you knew that you were going to outlive your pancreas and run out of insulin, would you want to bridge the gap to avoid blindness and kidney failure? If you knew that you were going to outlive your thyroid gland and run out of thyroid hormone, would you want to bridge the gap and avoid going into a coma? The why of taking estrogen replacement has to do with supplying your body with a hormone that it has always relied on. The win of estrogen replacement pertains to timing, of course, and this is the area that confuses most women most of the time. I'm going to address it in two separate parts, when to start and when to stop. You already know that the estrogen window of opportunity designates the first five to ten years of postmenopause as the time for starting estrogen replacement, but I'm going to veer away from that designation. And the reason I'm going to do so is that it's just too rigid. Women are not robots. We do not all age in a similar manner. And all that really matters for when to start estrogen replacement is your particular aging process. Regardless of your actual chronological age and regardless of how long you've been without estrogen, if your heart arteries have not aged to the point when you are already at high risk for heart attack, you are still a good candidate for estrogen replacement. You do not need to take the status of your bones or your brain into account at all. The only part of your body that affects the timing of estrogen replacement is your heart. So if you have no heart disease and have very low risk of heart attack, based on your lifestyle and risk factors, you can start taking estrogen replacement anytime. Most women who are early in their postmenopause are perfectly timed for estrogen replacement. The longer you go without estrogen and the more your heart arteries age, the less perfect the timing becomes. The second aspect of timing is when to stop taking estrogen replacement. This is the same thing as designating how long you should take estrogen replacement. In assessing this, let's go back to basics. If you had any other hormone deficiency like insulin deficiency or thyroid hormone deficiency, 
when would you stop taking those hormone replacements? Never? Why not? Oh, you die? Well, isn't that interesting? What's the difference between dying from kidney failure due to insulin deficiency or coma due to thyroid hormone deficiency and dying from heart attack, osteoporosis, or Alzheimer's due to estrogen deficiency. With all three, you're dead. And all three would kill you because of the hormone deficiency. So why would you think to stop taking estrogen replacement when you would never stop taking insulin replacement or thyroid hormone replacement? Obviously, you can always do whatever you want, but I am just baffled at the lack of logic that is applied, or isn't applied, <laughs> to estrogen replacement. So the bottom line of when to take estrogen replacement is that you can start it at any time as long as your heart can take it, and you can continue to take it for as long as you want. When it comes to whether to take estrogen replacement, it's all up to you. The most important thing is that you make your decision using facts and logic rather than fear and misconceptions. Much of the weather goes to comfort zones. You know, there's a quote I love that goes, everything you really want is just outside your comfort zone. And when it comes to estrogen replacement, there are many different comfort zones. There are comfort zones for you, your doctor, your insurance company, and the guidelines. And the problem is that they are not all the same. If you find taking estrogen replacement within your comfort zone, you need to make that very clear to all concerned. You need to make it known that you are aware of both the benefits and the risks of taking estrogen and that you are also aware of the benefits and risks of not taking estrogen. If you've decided that you do want to take estrogen replacement, then take responsibility for it. That may entail signing a consent form or a waiver of liability or a disclaimer saying that you take responsibility for your decision. Now, this is really somewhat ridiculous, you know. You would never have to sign any disclaimer or do any of these things in order to take insulin or thyroid hormone. But there isn't a bunch of fear surrounding those hormone replacements. You may have to find a different doctor if yours is unwilling to give you what you want. Your health insurance may not pay for your estrogen replacement. If that's the case, you might have to change your insurance or pay for it yourself. The guidelines used by your doctor or your insurance may indicate that you are not, an, not eligible for estrogen replacement. Again, you might have to change doctors or insurance or sign something to get what you want. The key is to understand that the decision as to whether or not you take estrogen replacement should be yours. Unfortunately, the current state of affairs with hormone replacement for menopause is completely out of whack with all other kinds of hormone replacement. Just know that you have to weigh all of your benefits against all of your risks to arrive at a decision that is right for you. And once you've done that, find a way to get what you want. So now let's consider some who, why, when, and whethers and create some scenarios in which you might want to consider estrogen replacement. For scenario one, who is a young, early postmenopausal woman. Why is the fact that she has miserable symptoms of estrogen deficiency that are interfering with every aspect of her life? When is the early postmenopausal period when there is hardly a gap between her own body's production of estrogen and estrogen replacement? And whether pertains to her comfort zone. She certainly meets all the criteria for the kind of woman for whom estrogen replacement is intended. In scenario two, who is a woman who is 12 years into postmenopause? She never took HRT because her girlfriends told her it was dangerous. But she's a health nut and has a very healthy lifestyle and no diseases. And she's very athletic, knows that her heart is in excellent condition, 
and has gotten my education on menopause. Why is her interest in preventing osteoporosis and Alzheimer's, both of which pose risks for her based on her family history and personal risk factors? When is 12 years after her body stopped producing estrogen, but her heart arteries have not aged significantly in those 12 years? And weather depends on the comfort zones for her, her doctor, her insurance, and the guidelines. She may have to switch doctors or insurance to get HRT, or she may have to take responsibility by signing a consent form, waiver of liability, or disclaimer. In scenario three, who is a 60-year-old obese sedentary smoker with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and diabetes type 2? Why is because she has symptoms of hot flashes and vaginal dryness? When is four years after her last period? So she is still in those early years of postmenopause when estrogen replacement is more beneficial than risky for the vast majority of women. Whether she should take estrogen replacement or not will depend on many things. She should undergo a cardiac evaluation. She should get her blood pressure controlled. She should stop smoking. She should be aware that because of her obesity, sedentary lifestyle, and smoking, she has a high risk of a blood clot with any hormone therapy. It will depend on her comfort zone as well as that of her doctor, insurance, and guidelines. For scenario four, who is a young 38-year-old woman who is prematurely postmenopausal due to removal of her ovaries after having breast cancer? She also had bilateral mastectomy. Now she has almost negated her risk of breast cancer, and she has terrible symptoms of estrogen deficiency. Why is because she cannot function in caring for her children with her devastating symptoms, and she definitely wants to avoid heart attack, osteoporosis, and Alzheimer's. When is her age of 38, putting her at very high risk of the diseases that are due to estrogen deficiency at such a very young age? And how long she should take it depends on her desire. Weather depends on her comfort zone as well as the comfort zones of her oncologist and gynecologist. She may have to take responsibility and sign a consent form, waiver of liability, or disclaimer. You know, I could probably paint just about any scenario, and the who, why, when, and whether could go either way for most of them. This is why tailoring everything specifically to you is so important. Never assume that your situation is like someone else's. So the who, why, when, and whether of estrogen replacement are all very important considerations for every woman. If you would like my help in assessing your situation, please schedule a consultation at menopausetailor.me. This is something I do in consultations all the time, and it's actually easier than you might imagine. The final decision is always, always yours. Okay. So that's it for today. Please come back in a week when I'll present the paradoxes of diseases due to estrogen deficiency. Until then, subscribe right here and keep up with me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>